Hi everyone. Um, again, I'm pretty late, but you know, with all the stuff going on with the web shop and uh, getting all the things together, it's gonna happen. I I can't help it. So um, I was going to show you. Well, I'm going to show you um, what happened to the uh, pourings I did. Uh, this is the 273, so this is the video 273, where I put some of those um, primary elements on. And we only had two drops of silicone in the white paint, so that's what we got. It's uh, pretty much dry, so that's the end result. Then we had the uh, video 274. This was with one drop of silicone where I added the uh, primary elements. As you can see, they here I, I'm not, just not fond of it. You can see where it went under the paint. So we have to find something that makes it sit on top and do pretty stuff. This was the one uh, I did 275. This was without silicone. As you can see, it's pretty much dried. I don't want to rub, rub over it too much, but here the sides are all dry, as you can see. But here I'm not sure, so I'm not going to touch it. And um, it is, um, well, it's exactly like, see there, I'll show you the very close-up. It didn't change at all. So um, it works like a charm. And it's going to be pretty easy when I uh, varnish it, because there's no silicone on it. So I'm going to put these away, just for the moment. And what I was going to show you, because a lot of people ask me, you know, just show us how you do it. The thing is that everything I do keeps on changing. And I know that it's confusing, but it's how you evolve as a uh, hobbyist or an artist. That's how you learn, and by your mistakes, you you tweak what you do, and stuff keeps changing. So right now, uh, what I do is I take a sponge, and I take a light color sponge, because I want to see if my colors uh, start to bleed. And uh, when they start to bleed, then you have to stop. So I take the Dawn dish soap. This is the same as you guys have, but you name it Dawn, and this is Drift. And I put, like, a lot of that stuff on there. So I made the, the sponge, I made it wet, then put the Dawn on there. And then I just go in circular motions, just like this. Don't forget the sides. And circular motions. And make sure there's a, a nice little lather on top, as you can see. Now, this might not apply to all paints, so be careful, because that's why I say take a light sponge, because when you're doing this, you check if the, your painting uh, starts to bleed. If it does, you stop immediately, you rinse it off, and you let it dry. But as you can see, and these are all Vallejo colors, and I'm telling you Vallejo paint I don't know, but they are making some fantastic paint because, you know, I can just clean it like this. See that? So how long has it been on here? And it's it's been long, right? But it just does not bleed. So this paint has uh, dried completely and it's sort of waterproof. So right now I'm going to hold it under the tap. So I just run water all over it, as you can see. And then I dip it with a piece of, this is toilet paper. That's what I do. And as you can see, there's nothing on here. So I don't know how this paint works, but it's totally, totally waterproof once it's dry. But 
when you have it like this, you cannot start varnishing because you, uh, please don't do it. Because there's, even though it looks like it's waterproof, um, there will be moisture on here. And to avoid cracking, I would put this, this whole painting, I'd let it dry for two or three days extra after cleaning. And that's what I did with this one. I did it exactly the same way. And uh, I, I'm looking for something that I find really ugly. So I, maybe I could just make it wet again and then see what happens when you um, varnish. <coughs> yeah, I don't, uh, I don't have anything really totally ugly. So I'm not going to be doing that. But after you do that and you let it dry for two or three days, make sure you can still get the airflow underneath. So leave those little push pins in. And uh, I, I would put it somewhere maybe where the sun shines through the window so it gets totally, totally dry. Then I come in with my gloss varnish. And what I would do is fill up a little container, just like this. And get your brush and put your brush in the uh, in the in the fluid, just like I'm doing now. Really soak it up, and then start varnishing. And let's see how that works. And as you can see, I always do um, like this and like this, always. You don't want to do one uh, one direction. I don't think that's good to do. So I really make sure it all gets in the canvas like that. I'm not sure if it really got much brighter because the Vallejo really keeps its color. So then I do the sides one time like that. Oops, don't drop it. You don't want to drop it because if you drop it on, on the face side down, then woo. That one's done, as you can see, nice and smooth. Now I'll just load up the brush with a little bit more and then do the final swipe. And what you really want to do is this brush, I hold it like this. So you are holding it flat and then you just, I don't want to go over it again though because it's uh, really, really smooth right now. But you just let it, you don't force it down like that like horizontal, but you just pull it over your canvas like this. And that's what makes it so nice and smooth when you do it like this. So you have the brush almost flat on your canvas. So that the higher you tilt your brush, the uh, less of the fibers are going to touch your canvas. The more you lay it flat, the more of this surface is going to touch your canvas. So that's what you do. You pull it over like this. So as you can see, absolutely there is no brush strokes, nothing. And of course, it it has to do with um, this stuff because it is good stuff, really it is. I'll get another one. This one I uh, already cleaned, so I'm doing this one too. And as you can see, I really load up my brush, get some more in there, really load it up and do like that and like that. So both directions. And always have a light source above your, um, when you're varnishing, above you. 
so that you can shine that light in there so you can just check if you got the whole canvas covered then pulling it down again like that then back over here like that and as you can see it's totally covered then I do the sides one time make sure that you get into the folds of the canvas on the corners see this I sort of pat I just pat it like that and when I pull it over you see that the brush as you can see it goes over the corner and it also does that underneath it'll go over say about mm, I'd say half a centimeter so putting it on here, patting it on, making sure I get the little folds, then pull it. And then I do this one. Make sure I get all the folds, pulling it down like that, nice and smooth. Then load up the brush one more time and look how smooth it is. It is really smooth, but I'll just put one on again. This time I'm going to pull it like that. Maybe across one more time. Yeah, I think I want a little bit more. I do see where... Ah, no, it's already gone. Yep, it's okay. So that's that. Then I clean my brush off on the side to get most of the excess uh, varnish off and then absolutely make sure you clean your brush so I do that with the other soap I have but I know you guys don't can't all buy that that's that green soap stuff the soft soap but this is uh this is okay as long as you make real good take real good care that you really you know smush it back and forth back and forth that the water gets in there. Sometimes I, I push on the on the fibers, the bristles, just to make sure that all the water gets in there. And I see a fly. I'm pretty sure it'll be stuck in my canvas pretty soon. <laughs> oh well. Of course, you never do this um, in the vicinity of your canvases. But I'm, I have to show you, so that's why I, uh, you know, if I take those uh, canvases away first, it's going to take so long. But I'm being careful. So you should always do this at a sink. Now, when you have the brush, you think it's clean enough, you think everything's out, then you go and take, um, take it to your tap, run some water over it, and like I said, you hit it with something. I will do that now. But first I'm going to take away these canvases. There you go. Then what I do is I hit it like this just to get the mo uh, moisture out and make sure that all these fibers are neatly aligned and that's it what you don't want to do is put it somewhere in a jar with the brush up never do that because the moisture will always go in and that's something that you I don't know I I learned that at art school what you do you would hang it so that it, the moisture can come down. Um, that's why most brushes um, of this size have a hole, so you can hang them. This one doesn't, but what you do is put an elastic band around here and just hang it on some sort of a nail and then let it dry. If you let it dry like this, all these hairs will be really neatly stacked, and then tomorrow when it is totally dry, all you have to do is go over your fingers with the fibers and it gets all soft and fluffy again and it's ready to go so that's about that's about it at the moment for the um, 
for the varnishing. Uh, I will show them again tomorrow when I do my second layer. And what I usually do is three, three layers. And then I'm sure every single millimeter is covered in varnish and then it's good to go. Um, I'm pretty sure that if you do two layers, it'll be more than enough, but I usually do three. I like to see that really smooth, smooth varnish and I like the build up. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, another thing that I wanted to talk about, um, I'm going to be looking for other brushes than this because I, I personally, I think 11 euros is a lot for a brush. Um, I, I, when I went to the art store, I saw this brush and I could feel the fibers and I thought, well, it's nice and wide. It'll save me time. That's why I bought it. But I think, uh, the ones I used before that will work too. I'll get one and I'll show you. This is a, a two inch brush. And even though the color looks the same, because this is dry, this is wet, even though the, the brush looks the same, I'm not sure if it's going to... See, this one, if you can see up close, can you see how uh, tight this is packed? And that is not the same here, see that? So that's the difference. But if this one works just as well with, uh, with this varnish, you know, then maybe, see, they have a hole. <laughs> they made a hole in there. Um, I'm going to try and uh, use this one tomorrow for the second layer. And we'll, we'll see if that leaves brush strokes, yes or no. If no, then these um, are very, very cheap. And I could sell these on the, uh, on the website. Um, I'll try to see if I can order some of these. For the people that don't care about, you know, if they're 11 euros or not, they don't care. They can buy one of these. Um, we'll just uh, figure it out. Uh, the rest. What else do I have to tell you? Oh, yeah. Um, tomorrow is work day, of course. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to do... I'll show you what I'm going to do. Because um, a lot of people said, wow, how can that be without the silicone and blah, 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 blah. Okay. I was just as, <laughs> just as surprised as you guys. I just wish I had two cameras. If you could have seen my face. Because <laughs> when that happened, you know, when I started to torch, I saw these little pinhole, really tiny little uh, cells. And I thought, well, yeah, that's not going to work. And then when I started tilting and they became bigger and they didn't um, deteriorate, I thought, what is happening? Why? And like someone said, it was, it was the white. Well, I didn't agree on that because as you can see, here are cells, there are cells, and this is, these are white cells. And up here you can see all kinds of cells and there are cells. There's no white in here. So I am... One thing I do know, you have to have white. You have to have titanium white. That's the thing what's sure. So what I'm going to do tomorrow, I'm going to try to create a painting totally in this color. Because I love these colors. And that's the teal. Um, I think all the blue is up here. So what you see here is the teal. And I think it's a mixture of the yellow. That gives the green, the, these green colors. So I'm going to try a pour with a lot of white, with teal and yellow. And see if we can make something that looks like this. That would be really cool. So that's what I'm going to do tomorrow. And um, I'm, I'm honest, honestly, I was just as, as surprised as you guys were. Because my mouth was open. I was thinking, what is happening here? And... Um, even that, the red, I don't know where it came from because you saw me put the colors in. There was no red, so I don't know where it came from, but it was uh, totally um, unexpected, very unexpected, and um, very surprising. <laughs> yes, it was. It was very surprising. But hey, if it works without silicone, and these are the cells that we like, because the, the best cells are this part. I'm going to put you up even closer. 
Look at that. How beautifully defined they are. That is so pretty. So we're going to... Even these are pretty. These are pretty too. So we're going to just test out a couple of colors together. Um, only three colors and we're going to do one pour out of that. Okay, the web shop guys. The web shop, we're still working on it. And what we did uh, get together is a, a really, really cheap shipping option for people outside of Europe. So that, that's really, really good. Uh, normally, you would uh, pay something like 30 euros for uh, 5 kilos, right? So we have, um, we weighed all kinds of stuff. If you take a bottle of pouring medium, the Vallejo pouring medium, and you add 9 colors. So 9 colors, you can do a lot with 9 colors of uh, paint. Uh, because, you know, you do five colors, or you do three colors, or you do six colors, but you can mix and match. So if you do a one bottle of pouring medium and nine colors, you can I can send you that for 15 euros, like $17. And that is pretty cheap. Um, Jan Willem and me, we're going to do everything on that slip to make it very, very apparent that it's for personal use. Because um, I've had three or four people, they, um, they, w they called the customs in uh, America and they asked about um, the import tax. And they were assured that if it is, um, how do you say it, feasible? If it is, um, you know, 100% sure that it's for personal use, you will not have to pay uh, duties on it, no taxes. So we're going to make sure the slip that's on the, on the package, we're going to make sure that it is very, very apparent that it is for personal use. If we have to put all those colors on there, like one bottle of this, one bottle of that, we will do that. And that way we will try to avoid those um, duty, tax duty costs. We can never guarantee it, and that's not what we're going to do. We, we will never guarantee it. But we will go out of our way to make sure that you get it without the extra cost. Um, we, can, uh, we can certainly do that. Okay, that was pretty cool, right? That's about, uh, that's about it. That's about what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Oh yeah, there's one more thing. I'm getting a lot, and really a lot of people are trying to hook up with me on Messenger. And I'm sorry, but I can't do that because, you know, some people just have like 20 questions and they, they type all the questions in and then they send me the request. I, I, I really can't because there are hundreds of people that who, who try that and I can't, I can't start answering questions on there. I have uh, up to now uh, 275 videos and in the playlists, if you go to the channel and you go to playlists, you have the basics, and you have varnishing playlist, and you have all the playlists. So I'm sure everything you you want to know is in there. Everything. You know, it. This is um. This is not something that um, I make up, and that's it, and never changes. So you have to you have to go through these videos because I change. I experiment i find things out and then i change it again and i know it's confusing but that's just what art is you know one like this i'm totally blown away by this this is totally amazing everyone was wow what did you do but maybe tomorrow i'll think of something else what i put in the mix and it'll be even more awesome because when i was doing this i was already thinking of adding just a little bit of uh, polymer medium. I thought, let me put in a little bit of polymer medium. Let's see what that does. I didn't do it, so this is only paint and flow troll. But, you know, next time I'm going to be experimenting with something else, and if that gives a better result, then I'll go with that for a while, until I do my next experiments. Because, you know, this is all about experimenting. That is my channel. My channel is 
working with you guys because sometimes you give me great ideas to try out and I, 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 you know, if it's colors, I will put that on hold for when I have time. But sometimes people on the channel um, say something that makes me go, hmm, very interesting. I've never tried that. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I got to laugh. It's just that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about how I talk to you guys. Um, it's really like you guys are all here in, in the room with me. <laughs> so that's really funny. I'm sure you feel the same. So, um, so I'm just experimenting and doing stuff and going along and just, you know, take the journey with me. If you see something that you think, okay, I'm going to try that, write it down, try it out, leave a comment behind if it works. And that's, that's really all, all we do on this channel. Just a lot of experimenting, a lot of um, testing new mediums, testing new paints and all that kind of stuff. And if we find something that is totally awesome, like this paint, then whatever I have to do, I will make it possible that everyone can buy this paint. And um, right now, this stuff, which I just use for varnishing, if you guys want it, I will buy it and you can buy it. No problem. Uh, Jackson's is another uh, thing. We are going to try to uh, compete with the prices of Jackson's. That's what we're going to do because we're not here for the big dollars. We're here for sharing the, the paint. So we're going to uh, try to meet their prices. And I know that they have um, ordered the paint and the pouring medium. And I know that it will be there the 8th of no the 11th of august it said on the website 11 8 so that is uh the 11th of august so uh, i'm not sure when we're gonna get our first order um from vallejo but when it's here it's gonna be up on the website and you guys can buy it we're gonna do uh, a special opening stunt with something with the coupon code that's what we're gonna do that's gonna be a lot of fun and um, if you keep it under those two kilos, you know, you can have it, we can ship it uh, almost all over the world for those $17. And that's Canada, Australia, that's the USA, you name it, and we can ship it for $17. So, okay guys, that's a lot of information. <laughs> that was a lot of fun talking to you. So, um, and this is a long video. But, you know, if you want to keep up to date with all the stuff that's going on, well, then you'll just uh, go through the uh, video. And if you were watching this before you go to bed, I say sleep tight and don't let the big bugs bite. And I'll see you all tomorrow morning. I'll make a video before I go to work and uh, we'll have fun. Okay, so make some beautiful art and see you in the next video.